The benefit of good relations is, is manifold. Firstly, I think it lets our young people come together in an environment that allows them to have fun, but at the same time it has an important point in terms of understanding each other, having mutual respect for each other's identity, and also hopefully forging lifelong friendships. And it also shows this council as a, a caring and a nurturing area that would take that effort to try and improve community relations uh, and across, across the piece. And it also allows the council to connect with many voluntary organisations that normally we wouldn't have any dealings with to uh, ensure that the good relations are built upon across the community. Good relations is having a positive impact within our borough where we see community groups from different backgrounds, culturally and socially, you know, working together and supporting one another through our recent crisis of COVID. It's great to see, whenever you see young ones, young children that are able to play together and move forward, where traditionally they wouldn't have been doing so. I've seen where the positive impact that that's had, where we've seen the skill sets within our communities, where community groups have took on different courses, different classes, and upskilling some of the people within our society, and where that has impacted positively within our community, where we have groups from traditionally opposed factions working together for the good of everyone within their community. Um, my name's Jerry. I belong to the Ahagallan Community Group. About two years ago, the ABC Borough Council approached the community group um, to gauge their um, interest in participating in a cross-community project. We thought that it was a fantastic opportunity for the community group and we were delighted to accept. Uh, we were further delighted by the fact that uh, the, um, we were matched with our next door neighbours, the Ahali community group. What we liked about the Good uh, Relations Programme was the, uh, the fact that the community groups had uh, planned uh, the activities themselves. Once the uh, programmes of activities was decided upon, uh, the, uh, the group, joint group was weaved through a rich tapestry of uh, local history and heritage. This took the form of uh, presentations, workshops, uh, day trips, and we did were involved in a residential course. Unfortunately, the program was cut short due to the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, however, we would hope and wish that the uh, Good Relations program is revived and that uh, the relationships forged between the group uh, continues. I'm Pat and I'm part of the Akali group. I look after them and make sure that they know when anything is on. I think the, I won, when I came, I lived in England for a long time, for over 30 years, and when I came back I wanted to get involved in community projects. And when this came up I thought, well, I want to make a difference, so this is my chance. Get things, something go, going in Akali. So we started off and um, we've had, I think Jerry has already said how many activities we've done. Uh, and I think that they've made a real difference. I didn't know anyone from Achigallan apart from one person when, um, when we started this. And now I drive through Achigallan and I see people and I wave. And sometimes I see people, in, well, I haven't been to the supermarket since the beginning of coronavirus, but um, I used to meet a lady there every week and we had a little chat in Tesco's in Lurgan. And it was very, very, it's very nice to be able to do that, to get to know people. I know for a fact that um, some friendships, quite close friendships have evolved through membership of the group. I think the being part of this group, uh, it makes some, um, it makes you think about how about people from the other village. You, you drove through the other village before, never thought anything of it. Oh, this is just another village. Don't know anybody here. But now it makes you see that I don't even know how to explain it. Um, we're all very similar. 
we have similar interests. We all like we like walking. We like um, doing activities. We like like um, learning. We, we're very fond of history. I think that um, good relations projects are important. Uh, they're a very good idea. You get to know people from different communities, um, and we all, we've learned a lot about each other's shared history. I think that we have more in common than not in common. Hi, my name is Fidel Mafern and I manage Arma Roma Traveller Support Group, formerly known as Arma Traveller Support Group. Uh, we became involved with this Good Relations project uh, probably over a year ago. Uh, we were invited along to a multi-agency um, Bulgarian Roma group um, to try and alleviate problems that were occurring in the Arma city and surrounding area. Um, this is because there was a huge rise in numbers of uh, Bulgarian Roma visiting the city and residing here. Um, they, they came with no English, um, very little work, um, no support um, from benefits, education and things like that. Uh, eventually we started to work um, at the Roma clinic, again another good relations project and um, we were involved with a lot of other agencies trying to help the Roma community. Then the pandemic hit um, and unfortunately the um, the Good Relations Programme had to close because of it, uh, but we felt um, with the support from the multi-agency group and from the Roma Clinic that we were in a position to, um, to try and help the, the Roma uh, community. Um, they were uh, met with all sorts of issues that, um, like unemployment, um, poverty, uh, and things like that and we were able to provide that support um, so so much so that we um, have taken the bold step of becoming known as our Ma Roma Traveller Support Group um, and we are starting to uh, get funding in our own right um, to support the Roma community. Now we couldn't have done any of this without the support of ABC Good Relations and we are very thankful for that and that we hope that we can work with them again in the future to keep this sustained. We are finding that, that the, 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 um, the numbers of Roma um, and Bulgarians coming to the office are increasing week by week. After the Good Relations project was finished, we spoke to the community about how they were feeling um, and we wanted to know what the differences were um, with that initiative. And they told us that they had now more of a sense and a feeling of belonging to our mass city. Uh, they felt that they had some, somewhere to go to, to look for support and help. And they felt that safer um, and they felt more secure um, and that their needs were being met. Hi, my name is Andrew Topley. I am the leader in charge of Scott Street Youth and Community Centre. Scott Street Youth and Community Centre, or SSYCC for short, is a rural youth club situated just outside Portadown. We were formed in 2008 with a cross-community ethos at the heart of the organisation. Since then, we have been greatly supported by our local ABC Council. We have been very fortunate to have won Good Relations Awards from the Council over the years. The Good Relations Department and the Council have also funded various art projects. These art projects have allowed our young people and children to create and design work that is still found today in our centre. We also received 10 weeks mug a game session funded by the Good Relations Department this year, which resulted in around 30 young people from Protestant, Catholic and ethnic minority backgrounds to play together and to receive expert coaching sessions. These free sessions provided a real hit with the young people. The Good Relations Department have also funded and aided us uh, and helped us now twice in the drawing up of our strategic plan of works. This work was carried out by our management committee, staff and volunteers, and this plan sets the direction of work that we undertake. Some of that work involves cross-community projects, one of which one of our young people, Susanna, will now tell you a little about. Uh, my name is Susanna Osinska and I am a leader and participant of Scott Street Youth and Community Centre. And during my time at Scott Street, I have 
been given the opportunity to involve myself with different cross-community projects, one of these being the BOSS project, which aimed to bring together young people from the different community backgrounds of Portadown, that being Protestant, Catholic and ethnic minorities. And I think that this work is great in teaching me as well as the young people how to live together peacefully and find out that um, the ties and the boundaries of our communities are nothing but that and that they're all young people and I think that this is very important especially as I want to be a youth worker in the future and I want to be able to know the different backgrounds that the young people come from and uh, be able to work past them so that we can all have a good shared experience. Hi, my name is Paula McGill and I'm from Lurgan Rugby Club. Um, in 2019, our committee decided that we would look into hosting um, an Ulster Rugby open training session at our club, which a lot of clubs in the province do. Um, however, we are fortunate enough to have a very dedicated and enthusiastic committee who are proactive in being innovative and inclusive. So, um, led by our um, chairman, uh, Raymond Atchison, we decided that we should look to make um, a different type of event, one that was more inclusive, one that was never seen before. So through um, our Peace 4 project that we ran, we had made really good contacts with the local Gaelic clubs. So we decided to make contact with them and Armagh GAA to um, host a community festival type event um, called Two Codes, One Community. So we brought both sport and codes together um, to host this one of a kind event. This event was supported by Armagh, Banbridge and Craigavon Council and their Good Relations team. Historically, Lurgan has been a very divided town um, and whilst there's been much progress uh, made in building relations, the sporting codes generally did not combine or interact. Um, so the event was uh, celebrated in August 2019. It brought together two wonderful sporting codes, that of rugby and Gaelic football. Ulster Rugby and Armagh GAA displayed their training regimes to a packed crowd at Pollock Park and then they combined to create a joint training session. So in essence we had Jacob Stockdale um, from Ulster Ireland playing Gaelic and the likes of Stephen Campbell and his teammates trying out rugby. Um, we're still hopeful we can get Stephen talked into coming to playing in Lurgan and, on a regular basis. Uh, the project had a massive impact on cross-community relations in Lurgan. Um, at the rugby club, our numbers have been boosted massively by welcoming new players uh, across the board, men's, juniors, uh, women's and girls, um, all who came to the event and decided that they would have a go at rugby. But essentially what was created ha has since been known as the Lurgan legacy. Sporting codes have been united, friendships have been formed and most importantly, history has been made. Hello, my name is Kieran McEavigan and I'm the Development Officer for St Peter's GA Club in Lurgan. Uh, so a number of years ago I was approached by Raymond Atchison of Lurgan Rugby and Cricket Club about starting up a, a project uh, with ourselves um, under the title of Two Codes, One Community. Uh, a very ambitious project from Raymond um, and I suppose from the early days we, we did hit the ground running. Uh, initially we had met up with representatives from Lurgan Rugby and Cricket Club um, and the own representatives of St Peter's Club uh, and sort of hashed out, you know, what can we do? How do we bring our two communities together in a much more positive manner than I suppose um, that would be perceived in the news and in the media? Uh, so thankfully we came up with um, a couple of projects. Uh, they came down to, to our pitch. We had a fun day there and then we reciprocated down at the Lurgan Rugby and Cricket Club grounds. Um, from there then, we, we've built such a, a strong foundation and working with the coaches and members uh, and, and young children and that foundation has really allowed us to kick on uh, during this pandemic of COVID-19. It has really allowed us to um, create a much a strong group in the Lurgan Community Aid Project uh, when that was brought together by Raymond um, and Ciara McCaffrey from, from Plan Earn. Uh, so our sort of strong foundations with the Lurgan Rugby Club has helped get that Lurgan community area project up and running um, and allowed us to help those in the community who really need it. Um, from there then, those three clubs, all the other clubs tied in, you know, the Clan of Gale, St Paul's, um, there was a few other clubs as well that tied in along with that. 
We were able to connect with all areas of the Lur all areas in Lurgan, and you know, quite often you would get calls from various people, uh, I suppose in areas that you wouldn't normally be in. Um, but we were able to, with our connections in Lurby Rugby Club, uh, locate those people and help out with whatever they needed. So um, often we would have, you know, grocery deliveries, uh, a lot of pharmaceutical deliveries, and I suppose I have to thank um, Gary Robinson and NAE for linking in there and helping out with that part of the, the Lurgan area. Uh, community aid project. Um, I suppose it's, it's been really refreshing to see how everyone has um, mucked in and been able to drive forward with this project and look at the bigger picture really um, and the bigger picture is that people need help uh, and the Lurgan Area Community Project is there to help them. Um, obviously in my background as a, as a primary school teacher uh, it's so important that children learn to um, Learn, learn to develop relationships with uh, people outside of their own community. Um, and I think that I can certainly see it with our own underage players, uh, that there, there is no stigma attached to going up to um, Mornview to play a bit of rugby and a bit of Gaelic. And I hope, I would say it's the exact same um, on Lurgan Rugby and Cricket Club's end. Uh, so I hope to see in you know, another four or five years time, some St. Peter's players lined out for Lurgan Rugby Club and we hope to see in another four or five years time some Lurgan rugby players uh, line out for St Peter's seniors uh, in the RMA leagues in, in years to come. My name is Willie Monaghan and I'm chairperson of the Darkley Rural Community Group and we're a relatively new group. We only formed in January 2017 and our aims were to regenerate uh, the Darkley area, some of the, some of the areas within the village had fallen into um, disrepair if you like and also to provide events and so on for, for local people. Um, we participated in a number of events that were run by the council but the most prominent was probably the Good Relations programme that we took part in that was run through the executive office and in that we liaised with the, the council to um, do up a piece of waste ground uh, that had fallen into awful uh, disrepair. Um, this whole area here uh, behind me was, was, was grown very high with weeds. There was rubble, there was rubbish. Um, local people had complained about seeing vermin and so on. So we had a, a large problem, uh, not only with the, with the look, um, but with the health and safety issue as well. So with the help of the Good Relations uh, programme, we, um, we managed to clear the entire area and to turn it in to a real community garden for everybody to enjoy. It was largely local people who all come together and uh, did the work. And I mean, now it's, uh, the garden is visited regularly by, by, by young and old. We would have uh, people coming along and dropping in bulbs or dropping in seeds or coming and helping out doing a wee bit of litter picking. Um, we also, for example, we made our composter, we made a bug hotel. So we, we've really turned it into a real usable shared space that everybody can come to enjoy. We also got a buddy bench as well because we would have a number of uh, people in our community who would have autism. And we're just making sure that the garden is uh, open to everybody and um, that there's facilities there to, to, to suit everybody. Another very positive part of the programme was the facilitation aspect of it. And we had a number of uh, facilitators who came uh, to show us how to perform various tasks and so on. For example, the plants and the shrubs. We had, uh, we had people came in to show us what the best shrubs were for the type of area, the shade and so on. Also in terms of the annual plants, uh, what goes best with what and you know how to mix and match and, and so on. Then we also had uh, people come to show us how to upcycle. So we've upcycled tires for example, we've painted them. We also uh, did our, made our own composter. So we're upcycling old pallets and old uh, bits of timber and so on. So we've been, we've been making the best use of the space that we have. We've been making the best use of materials that are are free if you like that, that are around us and also the people ourselves um, have been upskilling and that in subsequent years now we will be able to do all these things ourselves and I mean the garden's not a finished 
uh, product by, by any stretch of the imagination. You know, it's something that we hope to build on and continue to develop uh, for the future generations. And I mean, a lot of our, our people, we have a lot of kids coming in now, and uh, the older members are showing the kids um, how to do things. So, I mean, it's an intergenerational thing as well, and we hope that this garden will be here for a long, long time to come, and that it continue to improve and develop. My name is Howard Murray for Fryland Football Club. I have been a committee member for 52 years and of this past 16 I have been the chairman of the club. Uh, over that period of time the club has developed a huge uh, playing area for the local community. Uh, it was all developed uh, in 1962 from a meeting in the market house for Fryland. The first bit of land was purchased uh, in 1962 and then developed into a football field and opened on 1966. Uh, the club then moved into the 80s and we had three senior team and uh, two, four youth teams. Now we then renovated the clubhouse and reopened it again in the early 80s for to accommodate six changing rooms. In the latter years uh, we have the opened a new grandstand which now seats 205 people. Uh, that had been supported along with other projects that were ongoing by the local council and Just Giving. So our club will continue to develop so as to support the local community uh, to give them something to do on their weekends, something, some form of entertainment. Uh, at the ground as we can accommodate more than one sport now uh, but continue, we will continue to develop that so as to help the local community. My name is Paul Gibbons and I've been associated with our Friends Football Club for over 30 years as a former player and now treasurer and grant form filler uh, in the club. The club certainly have been indebted and, and entirely grateful for the continuous financial support that ABC Council have provided over the last 10, 15, 12 years through the Good Relations Programme. We've used this funding entirely for the benefit of the local community and the highlight of it has been our annual fun day that we host every June and uh, every June depending on the weather. This, be, this has been a, a huge uh, financial support to the club and uh, over the last 10 years the numbers and they uh, have grown from two to three hundred to now we're getting four and five hundred uh, individuals uh, through the gates of Profound Football Club. Last year uh, it was a particularly huge success and uh, it was the first ever uh, sword football tournament that we hosted and that was when we invited uh, two local Gaelic clubs, Clonduff and Drumgath GA and a local newly formed church, the Cornerstone Church to the grounds of Profound Football Club to participate in a, a, a mini tournament followed by supper afterwards. This pr proved a hugely successful for the club and certainly something that we want to t take to the next stage going forward and run quite a number of more activities and events similar to this. So once again on behalf of the uh, Refound Football Club I, I would like to pass on a huge thanks to ABC Council and certainly anybody associated with the Good Relations Programme for their continued support. <laughs>